Good morning, everybody. I'm Xenia, and it is more than an honor and a pleasure to be here with you this morning. I am a social media influencer, I am a digital entrepreneur, and I also wrote a book. My book is called Why You Should Empower Yourself. And I'm here today because I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what empowerment means for me in the day-to-day -day life. So I'm going to start with an example. Imagine that when you wake up, you are like an empty glass of water, or just an empty glass. Then you start by usually ch checking your phone. Like I do that, everybody does that. You check your phone, your messages, your emails, anything urgent, and maybe social media. I certainly check a lot of social media when I wake up because it's part of my job, but also it becomes a dependency. So you do that and you as a glass start filling up. So here's your emails, here's your colleague that's stressing you out, here's the bad news that you just read about another lockdown or whatever else is happening in the world. And this is your glass in the morning. So basically, you fill out your full capacity without having recharged yourself first. So how do we deal with that? Well, my method that I have been advised and have practiced to do is to not touch my phone in the morning for at least a few minutes if I have this luxury and to do something, one thing or a series of things that truly, genuinely makes me happy. What could those be? Well, those could be, for example, uh, a series of movements or affirmations as well that make you feel powerful, that make you feel happy, that make you feel confident in yourself. A few gentle and kind words into the mirror saying today I am beautiful I am capable I am intelligent and I'm loved because I love myself and then maybe a little bit of stretching a tiny bit of fresh air and a little bit of sunlight or light daylight before checking any electronics could really make that glass that you are fill up with transparent and clear water. So then when those annoyances come in, because they will, there's gonna be traffic, there's gonna be an annoying colleague, there's the commute, there is something. There's gonna be always something. When those come to be annoying you, to be part of your day, they're gonna be like a little drop of some you know, nasty liquid in your fantastic clear water. But the water's already recharged. So what happens if you drop a tiny bit of colored and nasty water into a full glass of clear and transparent one? It dissolves. And that will be you when the annoyances come through. So. This is part of what I want to speak to you today about. It is part of being less digitally dependent. Because we are, all are digitally dependent. I am absolutely guilty of taking refuge in my cell phone all the time. When I'm feeling bored. That's the first one. When I feel bored, I, I like to escape into social media, distractions, anything that's in my phone. When I feel uncomfortable in a social situation, that's the same thing. That's what happens to me. I take my phone and it's almost a reflex. It's like a pacifier. Our phones have become our pacifiers. And why this is bad? Well, Feeling boredom, believe it or not, is actually good for you. Because boredom 
is the bedrock of all creativity. Think about it this way. When you have nothing to do, you have no distraction, your mind begins to wander. You try to figure out how to entertain yourself or how to create something. There is no way you can have creativity if your brain is constantly stimulated when probably very unimportant things in your phone or in your device. And I'm guilty of it, don't get me wrong. I produce content for people to consume every day on social media. And that is why I try to make that content not just entertaining, because of course it must be for it to be consumed by millions, but also at times useful or educational. And also I try to talk about the dangers of overusing your device. So what to do about it? You'd be saying to me, yes, but Xenia, I need my phone. I cannot uh, detach myself from my phone for too long. It, my job depends, that depends on it. Oh yeah, well, mine too. My job depends on my phone in, to an extreme degree. And there is no way I can do a proper digital detox. Although I write about how to do a proper digital detox in my book, Empower Yourself. Uh, but a proper digital detox for me would be an incredible luxury. Yet I can still try and create small moments within my day in which I allow myself to feel bored without touching my device, to feel the frustration without reaching for that pacifier and to just be present in the space. Of course, in terms of relationships, we must set some rules. And if you haven't yet, this is the first step to take. No phone at the lunch table, no phone at dinner, no phone when you are in a conversation with friends and family. That is a very big no-no in any human interaction, not just in terms of um, good manners, but also in terms of developing healthy connections with other humans. But I'm sure this is a basic and this is step number one. Step number two that probably only a few of us do is conscious, mindful detachment from our phone on a daily basis. So, you know, when I go for my morning walk, that's what I like to do in the morning. It's my first uh, happy moment before I dive into stress and work. I like to get out quickly as soon as I wake up to get that fresh air, that light into my eyes and to, to walk. I tend to either not take my phone with me or put it on airplane mode. And uh, this is just a little moment, but it has become magical. And this is step number two, finding moments in your day and creating this rhythm and discipline in which you do not touch your device, no matter what. At the very start, it's probably going to be a little bit tough to get used to this and you know, you'll fall back into the same pattern again and again. But to create a healthy habit, and this one is one of the many healthy habit, habits I speak about in my book, you only need around 30 to 45 days of repetition. And this has been scientifically explored and demonstrated that after repeating the same action every single day for around a month, you will start creating new connections between your neurons. What happens then? Well, where a new synapsis is created between neurons, you will stop having to make an effort. The action you're performing every single day becomes an automatic habit and you don't have to make an effort just like brushing your teeth. You have been conditioned all your life to brush your teeth. I don't think you ever wake up and think, oh my God, this is such a hassle. I don't think it's ever been a problem for you <laughs> to brush your teeth. Well, it's never been a problem for me. It's an automatism and the same will happen. And just the same will happen with any habit you might try to create 
by forcefully repeating it every single day for 30 to 45 days. And in this case, we're talking about detaching to, from our dependency and our need to always be on our device. But it could be anything else. It literally could be anything that is a positive addition to your lifestyle. Let's say you're very shy and you want to be more sociable. You want to be uh, more affable with people. Well, try to force yourself to talk to a stranger every single day. Even just to pay them a compliment or to say hello, how's your day going on the street? Uh, for 30 days, 30 to 45 days. But you cannot skip a day. It has to be every single day. Do that for 30 days and you will see that not only it's going to become very, very easy for you to be more sociable because your synapses, new synapses will be created in your brain. So these little pathways will make you perform the action without the effort, without the, the, the unpleasant feeling of making this effort. It's just going to also become extremely pleasant to do. You will feel that you're doing something that you actually like. You will start liking your habit. That is how habit creation is performed and usually is not conscious, but you can do it consciously. And it's an incredible trick towards empowerment because you can literally make a list of the habits you would like to have and of the actions that you, the person you'd like to become and perform these actions enough times, repeatedly, and they will become part of you. Oh, and by the way, in the same identical way that you can create a positive habit, you can also substitute a negative habit that you have with something more positive. So. It's only by repetition uh, that you can achieve that. And a little bit of effort, just a month, just a month or two, will change your life because it's incremental. The book Empower Yourself is full of this type of power tricks. I call them power tricks. It's a hashtag. Um, and it is full of ideas of how to implement these tricks into your life to make it more efficient, effective and to achieve whatever you want. Why empowering yourselves? Why should I empower myself? Well, in my opinion is that we all could have a better, happier, healthier and joyful life if we took responsibility for our own situation. And what that means, well, it's a very broad subject, but it means first of all trying to get back to who you truly are and understand yourself. I think a lot of us, including me, not always understand ourselves fully. A lot of ideas are ingrained in us from the outside world, whether, whether it be our family or our culture, the society we grew up in or the media. Our brains that are very malleable are continuously bombarded with ideas that are not necessarily ours and shaped and manipulated into a certain train of thought. And once we're part of a train of thought, it's very hard to distance ourselves and to look at it from an outside point of view, more of an objective point of view and a detached one to understand is this way of living of thinking are these ideas actually mine how did i come to these conclusions or did i just absorb them from the environment and i took them as as if they are uh, an absolute truth and this is the first very first step to empowerment in my opinion. Once you have peeled off this onion, you know, it's like an onion of layers. There's you in the middle, your true self, that's how I imagine it, and then there is the layer of your family, of the society you grew up with, it might be religion, might be media, government, political ideas, 
no matter what, we all have those. And you start peeling off layer by layer by layer, maybe by writing them down and trying to see, do I agree with this idea truly? Or was I conditioned to think so? Trying to research, and this is a tough one, a completely opposite point of view and expose yourself to it. This is an incredible, incredible technique that is extremely tough, but it produces so much growth and peace, I'd say, in society. Because if you do expose yourself respectfully to the ideas, to someone who really thinks something completely opposite to you, but you should do it with respect, with honor and grace, just listen to them, just speak to them and understand their true motivations uh, behind their thought processes. And you might be able to see things from a completely different perspective. This is a good conversation to have, for example, I'm just going to give you the first example that comes to my mind about women and modesty. I'm a feminist and yet I do see and understand the motivations behind religious mod modesty and cultural modesty and covering up as well as the other end of the spectrum dressing very liberally or you know scrimpy bikinis and the women showing off a lot of skin and uh, I have my own opinion on both of these things but it's not about my opinion because I explore it to understand who I am and what I think and where I stand it's about opening my eyes and being open to understand a point of view that is completely truly different from mine and only by doing that I can understand myself that is why to become an empowered human and understand yourself better it is very very good to try to expose yourself to people's opinions that don't match yours because we live in these bubbles and social media doesn't help. You know, it might be a bit controversial, but social media very often just reinforces whatever you already think. There are very intelligent, artificial intelligent algorithms that follow us around the internet and try to understand what our views are and gives us more of the same. And leads us to a direction in which we don't really are we don't really get exposed to uh, views that are completely opposite from ours we really start living into the, in these bubbles this is why i think it is very very important not only to expose yourself to people that have completely opposite opinions to yours with respect and grace but also have informed discussions in real life physically meeting people, not just digitally. And the power of, power of human connection, we are all human, uh, is, goes way beyond our differences, I think. And so this is one of the techniques I, I have to peel these layers off of our own opinions, of our own uh, philosophies of life, uh, political views, credos, and try to kind of understand yourself from scratch then maybe very likely possibly you will come back to a very similar conclusion and you will be still convinced of maybe the same ideas but there is a chance that some of those ideas are not yours and you might be very surprised by working on yourself and trying to do this process through journaling writing down these layers you know you can make a, a little journal in which you have uh, sections family section political section religious um, you name it cultural absolutely your country your language etc and in these columns better if written by hand by the way it's better for your brain we'll get to that in these columns, you can just write your own ideas, you know, whatever it is, you know, your political, 
um, your um, you know affiliations in life or whatever you think is right and whatever I think is, is wrong you write it all down and then you have a very clear picture of your own kind of like mapping of who you are and then that's where the work starts that's how you can pinpoint each of those and and start uh, challenging yourself via watching movies and documentaries about the subject that could not match with your idea reading books that could make you look at your idea from a completely different point of view and as i said most importantly trying to integrate people into your life who are completely at the other end of the spectrum of your ideas and this is a motor for growth and it's a motor for it's it's a technique to to get to your real core self and of course to grow once you get to your real core self once you tr finally understand better the direction you will never know yourself fully i will never know myself fully because we're humans and beings in motion we evolve the whole time i'm not the same person i was yesterday and i'm not the same person i will be tomorrow but i will get closer to who i am and to understand my own ideas if I do this process and only then I can know what truly makes me happy and I can become more empowered because I will be less subjected to manipulation what it means well I think that humans in general we live in sort of an autopilot mode most of the time we are fed information crazy amount of information these days and we are so busy we are so much on the go in our society that we do not necessarily have the time to analyze all of this information we just take it for granted we think okay the sources seem plausible I'm not gonna have to take I'm not gonna take this time to research more about it I'm just gonna take it at face value because I believe this source and it's human it's normal and I'm not saying that we all have to research every single bit of information that comes to us because it would be impossible but I think it is always good sometimes to um, take it with a bit of a pinch of salt and uh, give the benefit of the doubt to to look further and not to you know go through life as uh, comfortable zombies because that is a very very great way <laughs> not to be empowered one of the things that have helped me personally and i write also about in the book is uh, always striving for rationality and don't get me wrong and I'm ex I'm an extremely emotional person I am like very Latin in my ways and I'm very sensitive and I think that is good but it's also really really good to pause and try to understand that certain reactions and certain thoughts are not to necessarily be believed not all of what you think is necessarily true and you shouldn't always believe everything you think i know that was really um counterintuitive initially when i ever like first time i ever read this somewhere i was like what do you mean you shouldn't believe what you think if you're thinking that but truly we are flesh and bones and oftentimes we are influenced by our emotions and we don't think straight humans are not rational we're not perfectly rational and we'll never be which is the beauty of it but mainly when it comes to crucial decisions and business of course don't get me wrong of course business but also relationships it's good to pause and um, think rationally and how to help yourself to do that well I have a power trick for that too I have learned it I have mastered it and it's helped me and my family and a lot of my friends alike tremendously i'm gonna give you an example of how to rationalize a thought that is not necessarily fully rational let's say somebody cannot dance so he's thinking oh my god 
I am so shy right now, I'm here and people are trying to drag me on the dance floor but I cannot move and I move like an elephant and I cannot do this, it's terrible, I can't move and can't dance. Well, there is a way to break it down. Again, the best way to, is to do it on a piece of paper. You can do it mentally, of course. Uh, it is to divide this piece of paper in three columns and on the left side of the paper you will write your irrational thought. In this case is, I'm an elephant, I can't move. Uh, in the middle, you will write why that is not true at all. You just have to make it up. Just rationally make an effort to think why is that not important in this moment? Why is this not a problem, uh, etc. In this case, I would write that, well, I'm an elephant and I can't move, but neither can other people on the dance floor, yet they're dancing. Or nobody's really watching and this is a safe space where everybody's just having fun or everybody is so drunk that nobody will remember. This is the second column. And the third column, you would write a more balanced statement in which you could decide to actually give it a try. It'd be like, okay, maybe I can't move, but I came here to relax and have fun. And I'm going to take this leap because it really, truly doesn't really matter. And only by trying, I will learn how to move. And also, I'm not that bad. I'm exaggerating. I'm actually all right. So this is a way to masticate, chew a thought that is not necessarily fully rational. And it is coming from an emotional place, in this case of insecurity about your moves and you'll never learn how to dance if you don't try you never learn how to do anything if you don't try and just like a little kid who is trying to learn how to walk and falls he doesn't even think about his own failures because he doesn't focus on failures he focuses on trying again and again and again so this is also an important step to to be not just successful but to to rationalize and and be empowered in your daily lifestyle so a positive loop of changing your negative irrational thoughts can truly help you on a daily basis and it's an exercise that can be practiced and after a while as i said previously this will become a habit and by becoming a habit your thoughts will become more positive and your autocorrective behavior will lead you to a happier state for sure and a more successful one in whatever you might do. So, so far we have talked about how to peel off this onion of uh, influences and uh, become uh, more yourself and understand yourself better to be happier and make choices for yourself that are uh, more in line with your true values that you might not even know you have uh, you know little parenthesis example there's people who think they chose a profession they love because they were conditioned to and they keep conditioning and lying to themselves. You know, I'm sure you know somebody like that. And they lie to themselves continuously on why this is good for them, you know, because they studied so many years for it and they've been in this profession for so many years, but they still feel unfulfilled. Well, this is a typical example of uh, outside conditioning and not looking deep down, not peeling off these conditioning layers and trying to understand what you truly want. Uh, there's many more, but this is like a cliche one parenthesis closed so we have analyzed the true self the the layers to peel off and how to do it uh, we have also spoken about a digital dependency and why from the very start in the morning you should uh, really detach yourself from your devices at least at the beginning and, and we have spoken about habit formation and how to hack it obviously with uh, repetition, consistent repetition for a month, a month and a half and uh, do not skip a day and then your habit beco will become an automatism. And we have also covered a little bit uh, how to choose rationality, how to uh, not believe every single 
thought we have and how to break it down into some from irrational into rational and uh, there is one more point I want to cover with you and it is um, a subject that is in my book and it was also the the title and the subject of a TEDx talk that I've given uh, the TEDx talk title was The Hidden Power of Pain and it is very important to me because it is um, a subject I've analyzed e extensively, I've spoken to scientists about it and uh, there is this phenomenon, phenomena that is called instead of getting a post-traumatic disorder, some people, there is a significant percentage of people that have been analyzed that after a trauma, a traumatic event in life, they experience something called post-traumatic growth. Yes, not a distress disorder, nothing negative. They actually grow from the pain. And this is something very interesting because I've always used pain in my own life when I was feeling unwell, when I was feeling maybe not accepted as a child of immigrants at some point in my life or when I was, uh, you know, experience maybe experiencing you know heartache in terms of you know love relationships as a teenager I would always f use my discomfort and feelings of pain to better myself and to achieve something to prove maybe to prove the world in a way that I'm worthy but also to use that feeling that you get in your body to to create something positive and this is a phenomena that has been explored and it's real and in my book I described how to use this pain and I just wanted to leave you with this um, concept and notion and I'm going to give you an example that is quite trivial and superficial but very typical it's a little bit of a cliche and it is about someone who you know gets dump, dumped by a girlfriend or a boyfriend and um, they are heartbroken they feel really bad about themselves and instead of just you know being sad and uh, falling into a depression people react and very often they start a gym membership they work on their bodies or they change careers or start a new business and become more successful in their professional life or grow somewhere or another in their life or start new hobbies that makes make them become you know more well-rounded as people and maybe in you know in a year two years in a certain period of time when this change happens most of the time these couples that have broken up they don't even get back together but the person from the breakup instead of having just this pain and living with this pain used the pain to better themselves to grow and and to to use it as a propeller for progress and from this very simplistic example we can we can take this analogy and apply it to any area of life and any trauma or problem or pain or discomfort or sadness that you might be experience experiencing and try to use it to start something new and to push yourself from it from that feeling and use it as your own fuel uh, instead of just you know running away from it because what we do when we have pain is to deal with it sometimes a spontaneous way to deal with it is to go into a in oblivion or to try to distract ourselves from it or try to forget about it try to forget about it and oftentimes this avoidance doesn't solve the issue at all uh, the issue is still there the pain you haven't dealt with will still be somewhere in your brain and your body but you know some people many people many of us uh, you know try to avoid it by you know using substances uh, could be something like coffee or 
uh, alcohol or something like drugs or getting into bad habits it could be you know any type of addiction like gambling or uh, you know there's so many addictions out there and this is a coping mechanism that is a very natural one but it's not solving the issue whereas a healthier coping mechanism would be truly to take that pain that was given to us that we didn't have any power upon and empower ourselves how do you empower yourself through pain is by using it to your own advantage you have this pain you cannot avoid it you cannot get rid of it that fast you need to deal with it so you know not just by dealing with the pain but also using it to better yourself i find this uh, is an incredible incredibly useful and empowering coping mechanism for any problematic situation that you might encounter in life and uh, if you condition yourself to do that you will be unstoppable because life's curveballs are gonna be always served at some point but it's how you react to them that changes the outcome i would say and uh, yeah so this is my my recommendation and um, it obviously is described more in depth in my book but there's plenty of literature and of research you can also just find by mm, googling or uh, researching uh, post-traumatic um, growth instead of PTSD and there's also been a study on children that were um, kids of not wealthy people that had you know difficult destinies uh, that were supposed to you know theoretically become uh, failures by all means because of their tough upbringing and and what happened to them but some of them had this coping mechanism the natural coping mechanism that made them uh, academically first and then career-wise more successful than their more Fortunate, fortunate peers. It's a study that can still be researched and found online if you, if you research for it. You'd be like, okay, thank you, Xenia. I might use this pain for, you know, bettering myself. But how do I get rid of it? How do I get rid of it? I don't want it. Actually, that makes sense. Me neither. Who does? So, there is a way to deal with pain and anxiety, and is it is through exposure to it so it is not the most pl pleasant way but it's the only <laughs> uh, foolproof way and the way to deal with it is through gradual and incremental exposure so say you're afraid of a dog and of dogs in general and you know as soon as you see a dog you you feel stressed out your body tenses your anxiety levels go through the roof and that happened to me that happens to me actually so it's a good example well what i've learned that your brain does in those situations of anxiety that most of the time are not rational is that it thinks that you know the dog will attack so basically if i'm next to a dog and i try to hide and i run away or I just you know cross the street or try to be very careful it's a reinforcement for my anxiety. It is not helping me to get rid of my fear of dogs. The only way to get rid of this pain or anxiety is through exposure, of course, gradual, slowly but surely, bit by bit. And so basically it's by spending some time in the presence of the dog in this case and feeling those heart palpitations, feeling the discomfort and the same thing happens for any other anxiety and fear you might have in life and literally just stay in it stay in the fear and see that nothing happens that your fear is not being confirmed is irrational and, on and only like that you will be able to train your own brain to discern what is actually dangerous and what is irrational and why your fears are not necessarily justified so exposure and gradual expo exposure to the feeling of anxiety the feeling of pain uh, are probably the best ways to deal with it to see that actually nothing is happening 
nothing you know the dog didn't bite me and uh, this is just one example of how to deal with it but this is a strong one for day-to-day -day irrational anxieties and fears and before I go and I leave you to all of the other amazing speakers I am going to leave you one last power hack that I just want to share with you today and it is a confidence booster somebody that we all need sometimes and I use it when I really don't feel you know confident or things are not going well well you know how to do it you have to perform a task that is difficult for you it doesn't have to be too difficult it has to be something that you have been putting aside or you've been procrastinating the whole time about it and this time you just sit down whatever that is or stand up depending on what it is and see through so do it and basically by making this effort whether it's small or big your brain will get the signal that you have completed a task this task completion will give you a boost of oh I am actually capable I can do this you will feel more proud of yourself and if you don't by finishing this task well then you should just look at yourself in the mirror after you finish that task and truly compliment yourself for having had this ability sometimes we're too hard on ourselves our internal talk is very negative most people you know insult the, insult themselves on a regular basis sometimes I do that as well I always try to fix it when I do it I say oh I'm so stupid oh you're so stupid no things happen we're gonna solve it don't worry you're doing your best or you've done this you've been good today you're amazing congratulations you're doing so well you're doing your best so finishing a task is a as a big confidence booster and a the daily life and also positive self-talk inside your head is also a way to boost your confidence and if you don't feel it truly it doesn't matter just fake it till you make it so I'm running out of time but I just hope that this little conversation that we just had this little talk this little chat uh, will leave you with something because for me uh, individual empowerment is so important because I think we cannot have a progressive, cultured and uh, happy society if the individuals in this society are not fully independent mentally and <laughs> also they are not fulfilled. So for me this is so important and I hope that this journey towards self-empowerment is going to continue on a personal level and on a global level and I hope that it's gonna be and I hope that this uh, journey towards self-empowerment will be embraced by more people and more people will want to become independent thinkers and creators of their own path in the most genuine possibly genuine way so thank you so much my uh, instagram is at xenia my name is xenia chumi my book's called empower yourself and i hope you enjoy the rest of this fantastic conference thank you for having me